Welcome back to the Who's James. Be a the Who's James. We're talking Canada soccer and U.S. soccer and be a if you're if you're watching from a Spanish-speaking country or the USA. And um, today we're going to be talking about the international friendly roster that just dropped uh, a few hours ago for the USA. And keep a couple reminders here: the USA plays two friendlies in Europe against Japan on September the twenty-third. That one's going to be at eight thirty in the morning, I believe. So, um, and then that one on the twenty-seventh September. Uh, Saudi Arabia versus USA also somewhere in Europe. I believe both of those games are going to be pretty early and Unfortunately during those times I have something going on or I have to do go to class and fair warning If you are going to interested in watching me, my reaction to those games um, By the way on that note if you want to see that make sure you like share subscribe it uh, tell your friends about the video, but those fair warning most likely those will be a late reaction because I do have other stuff I need to take care of University work in particular and things that are getting real as we just started so fair warning if you are gonna watch me for that um, Those games they may be a little late and by a little I mean a lot of bit late and just also a kind of housekeeping you know, I wasn't able to make a that's why I wasn't make, able to make a video on the US women's national teams narrow win over 2-1 over Nigeria because University works is already coming guys, so hopefully by World Cup time things will get a little more manageable and that way the World Cup videos can still be pretty quality but nonetheless today we're going to talk about the international friendly roster that Greg Berhocher has called in for the USA and this is kind of a final tune-up for the US MNT before the big dance the big moment we've all been waiting for all year long it was supposed to be in the summer but nope it's because it's in the desert and we're having it in the winter so it's a little delayed than normal but it's, it's coming. Nonetheless, it's coming. We just got to hang in there. It's only about two more months out still, and it's going to be here before we know it, so time is going to fly. Um, but yeah, on that note, we're going to be talking about um, the names that have been caught up, you know, what I think about the names of this list, and stay tuned also, is I'm going to be doing a rundown on the starting 11, on the projected starting 11 that I would play for the USA, an A team and a B team, because the USA has enough players to do that, and I typically always do uh, rotational squad because you know the US is probably gonna rotate the squad and get everybody where they can some minutes in both of these games it's kind of really see what they can do that one last time if in order to get on that plane for Qatar 2022's World Cup this November which that's the big big roster drop also tomorrow off topic please let me know if you want me to react to the US World Cup jersey that will be coming out yes they will be releasing their World Cup kits and we will be seeing that in the World Cup this fall, um, this November actually. And there's been a lot of debate around that too, you know. Many people want to see the Where's Wildos kit. Many people want the old-fashioned USA with the slash uh, jersey over it. There's a lot of interesting designs and uh, preferences out there in terms of what people want to see when it comes to the USA jersey. So, yeah, just let me know if you want me to see me react to that. I might still react to that if I have some time. Um... And again, I have to see how things are tomorrow, but if you are interested in that, please let me know in the comments. And on that note, I think that's everything out of the way. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and break down these uh, rosters, these names on these rosters, shall we? So we'll start with our goalkeepers that have been called into this camp, the final camp of the friendlies before the big dance. We have Ethan Horvath, once again the hero that came big against Mexico in the Top Cabin Nations League. Then we have Sean Johnson and Matt Turner. Honestly, this one I think is right now pretty clear and obvious given how everything's been going. Matt Turner may very well get the starting nod for the USA. If, you know, things keep going the way they are. Obviously, a lot of these names on these lists, um, hopefully there's no injuries. And so there's always something to change because it's sports and you never know when something could go wrong. But we all hope and really, really hope that nobody gets injured. So. Yeah, but notice one thing on here too. There is no um, other goalkeeper. There is no Zach Steffen. He used to not make this list. And many U.S. fans saw this coming as this was kind of, he was kind of trending downward rather while Ethan Horvath or no, Sean Johnson and Matt Turner were trending upwards. Specifically, Matt Turner and Sean Johnson pretty much too. Sean Johnson, uh, we saw him play a couple friendlies and even play a little bit in the MLS um, All-Star game as well as with New York City FC. So, 
Yes, things for new NYCFC have been going a little bit south. I think they're on a little bit of a losing streak, but um, they're still doing pretty decent overall in MLS play. And Sean Johnson is still coming up pretty big when he when it matters. He answers the bell, which is why I think, rightfully so, he moved into Zach Steffen's spot. And he very well might play the second game against Saudi Arabia or any other team. He might, he might get some playing time here. But it's definitely going to see Matt Turner out there. I would I would be surprised if we don't see him play. But between Ethan Horvath and Sean Johnson, one of those um, may get a starting nod against Saudi Arabia or perhaps even Japan. Who knows? But those are your goalkeepers. That was one change I noticed immediately. There is no Zach Steffen which he's been, obviously, everybody knows he's been riding the pine previously, but I think he's on tramp right now. He's on loan to another club. But at Man City, he's been riding the pine, and everybody knew that's not going to get you anywhere in terms of the U.S. national team. So that's why, that's, I, I believe, that's the reason why that change, it happened. And then for our defenders now, we have Reggie Cannon, Cameron Carter-Vickers. Guess who's back? It's Serginho Dest. He is back, and I know he was injured in and out, just like Giovanni Reina, just like we're going to get to him later. Those two players I'm happy to see back in this camp. But Serginho Dez, one of the quality, arguably, right now, the best defensive backs for the USA. And they need him, especially after um, a couple friendlies. And glad to see him get back and up to speed a little relatively qu uh, quickly. Um, he may, uh, it's interesting if he starts or not, kind of like him and Reina. I have... Some, you can go, there's something interesting about those two players I'm really interested about is will Greg Berhunter start both of them since both of them have been coming back and forth off an of injury or will he ease them into the lineup? Um, I don't know how Greg is going to do that, but Serginho Dest and Giovanni Reina are obviously the two key players for this USA squad and much, much needed return and they're really, really glad to see their names back. But I don't know if they're going to start because, you know, just like um, some players, I know they start immediately, but some players don't because they want to get eased in or the coach wants to ease them into the lineup rather than just throw them into the fire right away. But I don't know how Greg is going to do that. So we can see how Bert Halter is going to do that. But we have Aaron Long going on down the list. Chris Richards, Joe Scally, Sam Vines, DeAndre Yellen, and Walker. Zimmerman. So we have some quality choices here. And you, as you can see in my, you'll be able to see later on in my A team and B squad that I've kind of picked out all, but um, there's one name on here. I think Joe Scala. I think he's he can be there, but he might even get some playing time. But he's just in the mix. He's not one of those definite ones yet, but he definitely can make a B squad if Greg Barger sees him fit. But um, so Gino Dess is a big story here. Walker Zimmerman, I'm glad to see, of course, in here. Um, Aaron Long, too. Um, I know he's also been previously in and out with injury. He's back in there. And the other one was um, DeAndre Yedlin with Inner Miami. So those four, I believe, might um, might get the starting now. I think I have them in my eighth squad. I have to, we'll see later on in the video. But for sure, those four, I think I have selected. And we'll find out if I have them or not. But those four names, I would definitely roll with in your back line for the USA in four three three formation. And then, um, but other than that, no really big names here in defenders um, obviously later on this is probably a midfield speaking of the midfield we're going to get to it but um, Christian Rodon we all know as I made a video on that earlier was he's out and he um, very well could be out for the World Cup roster so because of the injury which there are mixed there are mixed feelings about that some people are just didn't want to see him on the roster and some people uh, really want to see him but it can go either way, but the good news is for the USA, they have plenty of backups and depth on this talent. You know, look at the depth chart for this USA. As, as I said, they can call in new names and all kinds of new stuff. And sure enough, in the midfields, we roll right into that segue. Uh, we have Kellen Acosta, Tyler Adams, Luca De La Torre, Weston McKinney, glad to see him on there. Giannis Moose as well, and Malik Tillman, who came up pretty big in the previous friendlies uh, that the USA had over the summer as well as even one game against El Salvador. Um, so, names to stand out on this one. I'm glad to see Luca De La Torre in here. Um, of course, Giannis Moose is in there. Weston McKinney is, of course, all hands down has to be in there. Um, Tyler Adams, too. So, I think that's my three, if I can remember. Tyler Adams, Weston McKinney, and Luca De La Torre. Uh, oh, and Giannis Moussa. Um, no particular order, but um, I believe, obviously, Tyler Adams will be playing 
the um, center defensive mid position because of his, that's where he normally plays and he's really good at facilitating pushing in or starting an attack and playing defense so I believe how I have him in the CDM position but Weston McKinney and Giannis Musa now Giannis Musa I think we'll find out and I can explain but it was either him or Luca De La Torre I mean both of those they're really electric players and you can't go wrong right now with either one of them but given how things have been going probably Giannis Musa would have a slight edge over Luca De La Torre although Luca De La Torre has been catching up rapidly so I would say those two names, and you're going to find out my squad uh, that I have here. Um, they'll go either way, but I have I do have Giannis Musa, I believe, in the starting A team. And Malik Tillman played really well. He looked really well. Once again, a German um, commit to America. So he's a dual national transfer. And he looked really well for his first couple of games in a USMT uniform. And that's really, really great to know. It just adds to the USA's midfield step chart, as I said. And it's a neck man up mentality, and in in, um, in relative to Christian Rodon not being on this list, um, I believe honestly looking back, he was in the mix with Sebastian the Jet and a couple of other just kind of mid tier um, U.S. MNT midfielders. But nonetheless, there are plenty and plenty of replacements of midfield as we have on this list, um, and that's really really good to see. And it really shows how talented, as I said, this U.S. MNT squad is. But other than that, no really particular name stands out other than that one injury, which a lot of um, Greg Bolcher fans are know that um, Rodon was a go-to guy for um, Coach Berhalter. Finally, on to our forwards, we have Brendan Aronson, Paul Ariola, Jesus Ferreira, Jordan Morris, Ricardo Pepe, Christian Pulisic. Once again, glad to see this guy's back, Gio Reyna, and Josh Sargent. Now, this one out of all the list and names on this list, in terms of picking a squad, this one was definitely the hardest because there are so many names that you can choose from and arguably every one of these, just about every other uh, one of these names have a case to why they should be in the starting 11 for the US MNT as well as even the B team. But I did narrow it down based on, as you can see, um, the stats here where they have games to goals, uh, who's in form right now and who's not, and even a little bit of... Um, other factors that made it play a role. But once again, as I said with Serginho Dester, I don't know how Greg Bosch is going to ease Gio, Gio Reyna in. Is he going to start him right away? Or will he come off the bench and just kind of make sure he doesn't get that much time and get re-injured perhaps? I don't know how they, I don't know how Greg's going to play both Dest and Reyna, but however he does, it should be interesting. Um, look who's back on here is Ricardo Pepe. Now this is one question for you guys to let me know in the comments. Should Ricardo Pepe, do you think, given how he performs, will still perhaps make the plane? I don't know. I personally think he has a lot still to prove, even if he somehow flips on a dime. I mean, he's been relatively quiet over at Augsburg in Germany, but um, nonetheless, I mean, I guess it's worth a shot for him, and it's glad to see him back just to get uh, experience and get some more games. But one name that is not on here is Brandon Vasquez for FC Cincinnati. He's really been in scoring form. There may be mixed emotions about that either. As many people are like, yeah, but he's beaten up on kind of lower competition, no offense to the MLS, as many would say. Or, yes, you should just bring him in because these are experimental games and you should always try and look at and see who you can play. So there's maybe, maybe, there may be mixed emotions on whether or not uh, Brandon Vasquez was not included in this list. But overall, we do for the forwards have a lot of familiar names here to look at and I decided and this was as I said uh, easily the most challenging choice that I had to pick between these names and who goes on to making the starting 11 for the USA but other than that those are your names um, overall other than a few kind of new name or a few uh, returning names I should say not really many surprises but um, nonetheless it's what we all expected as USMNT fans and what most fans expected as well. But the final reminder before I show you the A and B squads and kind of give a brief explanation and not make the video too long, uh, the inter here's the TV info if you are watching down in the States. Um, of course, if you're watching elsewhere, you can probably find a way to uh, stream it. But for the September 23rd game against Japan, that game is at 8 26 a.m. That's an odd time. 
8.26 a.m., which, as I said, I'll be, um, I'll, I'll be up for that, but I may have something going on in terms of getting ready for class, and that one will end until, like, 10.30, so that'll end when I'm in class on that, um, 23rd, I believe, but I'll have to catch up with that, probably do a reaction after the game is over, that is in Germany, so the USA will be returning to Germany to play this game, and, yeah, Malik Tillmans and a lot of German, other German-Americans, uh, original country, so they'll be returning to their original home, and we'll see what the USA can do on German soil, and Dusseldorf. And then, oh, by the way, that game can be seen if you're watching in the States on ESPN2, ESPN+, Plus, Unamas, and TUDN if you're Spanish, or if you like Spanish-speaking commentary. Uh, September 27th game against Saudi Arabia, that is going to be in Spain this time, so Giannis Musa's home division, La Liga, and this one's at 2 p.m. I may still be able to watch this depending on what time, what I've got going on. But um, either way, if I do got something, it'll be a relatively, as I said, for both these games, it'll be a relatively late reaction. This one's going to be at Estadio Nueva, um, I'm saying this name wrong, Condom Condima, and as I said, Murcia, Spain. But um, if you're watching, it's going to be, this one's going to be covered by Fox Sports 1, Unamas, and TV. And so instead of ESPN for that one, it'll be Fox. And now to the moment we've all been waiting for, we have my lineup, basically. So... As you can see here in the first, this is what I went with the first squad. As I said, some of this can be debatable, especially in the striker position about who deserves to be up top and why. I mean, you can argue that Brendan Harrison's looked good for Leeds United, which is why I know I have fear of Ferreira. He's also been on a chair for FC Dallas, but that's another one that can go in between. Brendan Harrison, his Ferreira... One can come off the bench for, them, for another. That's how I, I'll just put it that way, but... For my for the sake of my squad, I have um, Pereira. Well, we'll start with the defenders. But I'm Matt Turner in net. Um, this one's pretty clear cut for me. Matt Turner has been getting most of the starting nods, and he's looked really well. He's answered the call every time he's been called upon to do so. Sergio Des, welcome back. I have him starting once again. As I said, I'm not sure how Greg Bell is going to play Des. Is he going to throw him in the fire immediately? Is he going to come off the bench? And you know, I don't know. Him and Reyna, I don't know. But for the sake of who I would play, then yeah, I would start them both. But I don't know how Greg's going to do that, given that both players have been coming off of injuries or other kind of um, paperwork stuff with their clubs. Uh, Aaron Long, I have as a defender, too. Once again, another player that's previously came off of injury, but he's played a little bit now, so he might start, I believe. Walker Zimmerman was arguably one right now, right now one of the MLS defenders of the year, and then DeAndre Yedlin, who's, who's played a lot for Inter Miami. Those are my back four I would go with. Glad to see Des back in there. Zimmerman would be one of the anchors for the center backs. Aaron Long as well, and Yedlin, if he, I know he, Inter Miami as a, as a whole has been all right, but Yedlin has looked pretty decent. I would probably say Yedlin. He's had a lot more starting nods, as I said. Most of this has been based off of who has the most starts and goals per game. Yeah, Yedlin has like 75 matches, so I believe Yedlin, I believe Greg Barge can probably go with experience, so Yedlin would be, if he does so, Yedlin would be a candidate for that one. So that's your defensive back line. In your midfield now, we have Weston McKinney, Tyler Adams, and Giannis Musa. As I said, honestly, it's a toss-up between Luca De La Torre and Musa, but for my sake, I would go with Musa because I personally believe that Musa, I mean, both are electric players, but Musa... Um, in both, honestly, you can sub one in for another out and keep that going, which is the beauty about that with Luka De La Torre and Musa. But for my sake, you have McKinney, um, Adams playing that, once again, that center defensive mid position in the 4 3 throw. Not really a 4 3, yeah, it could be a 4 2 3, but you can have him playing center defensive mid, pushing into the play at times of facilitating the attack. But you can also have Giannis Musa there. So Weston McKinney and Adams are definitely must-haves in this A team. But between Moose and Luka De La Torre, arguably some people can also debate that it can go either way. As I said, you guys tell me anything that's debatable here, you can tell in the comment section, or even tell me what you would play, who you would play instead in this A squad. So, yeah, that's what this channel is also about, just going for being respectful in the comment section about other people's opinions. And, yeah, but up top... Of course, you have to have Captain America, Christian Pulisic. Um, as I said, between 
Reyna, I'm not sure if he's going to start or come off the bench, but he's definitely a quality he started there. And Jesus Ferreira, um, he's been in form and with FC Dallas, but you can make a case, as I said, with Brendan Aronson that, and other strikers, perhaps, that they deserve a starting nod rather than Jesus Ferreira, you know. That's interesting. So there's a lot of debatable pieces about this A squad that I selected, but that's where you guys come in and tell me in the comments where what you agree and who you would replace her if not. Um, and then for our B squad, this is the other squad I just came off with the remaining players that I would play if not, so if they didn't make the first team. But as I said, some of these players like Luca De La Torre and Brendan Aronson are debatable. But in your back line, you have Sam Vines, Chris Richards, Ethan Horvath. Um, honestly, Horvath and Sean Johnson are a little debatable because um, Sean Johnson has been really catching up to Ethan Horvath. And I know, I guess, Ethan Horvath, you can base off of that form too. Um, you could say between Sean Johnson and Ethan Horvath, who has the better form? That can be a tiebreaker. Cameron Carter Vickers, also in the back line, and Reggie Cannon. That's our back line for the USA. And then for your midfield, you have Luca De La Torre, who I say can go either way with Giannis Musa. Kellen Acosta, who arguably will be the center defensive mid position, as he also has great service. So, I don't know. Because of his service, maybe he could break the starting lineup. Maybe Greg Barger will see that that way because he's also another Greg Barger favorite. But, yeah, he's really had really great service whenever he uh, has to put the ball in the box and cause havoc. So, he also has a case because of the great service of being the starting 11. And Malik Tillman, he's still working his way into the squad. I would say he's definitely a, um, a second tier, maybe a sub. And also, you know that German flag because it is American, but FIFA hasn't updated it. Jordan Morris up top. Um, I want another. He's coming back from injury, but he's played a couple games already. and He's looked pretty well for the USA. He's still working his way back, I think. Brendan Aronson, as I said, can go either way with Jesus Ferreira or any other striker up top. And Paul Areola, who I see solely as a second team player. Um, as I say, even with this guy, if you feel like is this debatable, um, let me know in the comments on who you would rather see in the A squad, B squad, whatever. Um, or even tell me what players you were sad to see not make this list for the friendlies of these. As I know this is not set in stone, but it is a good indication of who will most likely be on that plane right now to guitar based off of form, uh, healthiness. Um, and all other factors that go into play. But as I said, things can always subject to change, especially in sports. Things can change on time, like in the snap of that. But I hope that there are no injuries, and I hope that everything is, for the most part, still okay. And, yeah, as I said, that pretty much does it for this video. I'm um, not trying to kick it too long, but if you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about it. Also, remember to comment and be respectful of other people's opinions. If you do so in the comments. And... Yeah, let me know, hit the bell notification, I mean, any videos I post, post, especially these, if I do have to react to the friendlies a little later than immediately where I normally would. And tell your friends, are you excited for the World Cup in two months?